What is up guys, Coach Joe. In this video, Coach Matt and myself are gonna teach you guys how to get stoned. Wait, wait, is it stone, right? Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. What is up guys, Coach O here at the Lions Inn, located in Colmar, PA. Got my trusty handyman, Coach Matt, strongman competitor, runner. He does it all. I don't. He, I think he's just confused on what he's trying to accomplish here, but he's an absolute beast. And in this video, we're gonna be teaching you guys all about Atlas Stones, a very highly requested video for the channel. We're gonna be hammering all sorts of strongman stuff. I'm a strongman competitor, he's a strongman competitor. We like lifting stones and getting stoned. Yeah. Ah. But if you're new to the channel, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all the videos. Yes, that's my spiel. And let's get on with it, okay? So in this video, we're gonna be talking to you guys about what Atlas Stones are. We're gonna talk to you guys about how to do them and technique demonstration with Coach Matt, then cover the common mistakes that happen with Atlas Stones, and then all of the gear used to become the best Atlas Stoner humanly possible. So let's get into it, guys, I'm pumped. All right, so if you have competed or even watched Strongman, whether it's World Strongest Man or a competition, you've seen these big concrete balls, okay? These are the balls of the gods, literally. So what this is, it's just a big concrete ball. You can make them with concrete, whatever materials you want. You can have them at all different weights and they actually come in all different sizes, ranging from smallest all the way to biggest World Strongest Man stone, huge. You have to be an absolute mutant to pick those things up. Uh, but they're just a staple in strongman training and historically in culture, uh, especially in uh, places in Europe and all over the Eastern part of the world. These are called manhood stones because you gotta be a man to pick these suckers up. And that's why they're so much fun. Um, so these are one of my favorite events. Coach Matt, what about you? Uh, I'd probably have to go to the log, but this is second favorite. This is awkward, okay. Uh, well, <laughs> Matt's officially off the video, but we'll continue on anyway. Coach Shania, you're in, let's go, sub, just kidding. Um, so right now we're just gonna kind of dive into the basics of how to do a proper stone load starting from the stance all the way up to the load. Okay, so first thing we're gonna talk about when it comes to Atlas stones is the position with the stone uh, from the yoke, okay? So you wanna make sure that you get this down right because it can hurt or benefit you uh, later on in this lift. So what I like to do, and Coach Matt's gonna do, is he's gonna comfortably put his forearms on the yoke bar, and that's gonna kinda give him a rough idea of where the stone needs to be. So since he gauged it, it was a little bit close, so he's moving it back slightly, and typically in a competition, they're gonna have you start with your forearms on the yoke bar just like so. So it's a good skill to practice and a nice way to gauge how far you need to be to make sure that you have a proper stone load over the bar. So from here, if you look at Matt's stance, he's about shoulder width uh, and he's not too far off from the stone. So that's one of the things you wanna focus on is you don't wanna have your legs super far out and you wanna keep them right outside of the stone. Now the next thing is, is Matt is perfectly right over top of the Atlas stone. So if you were to imagine a line, and this is a globe, basically cutting that globe right in half, right down the middle, that's where Matt is squared up over top of the stone, okay? So that's the basic setup, uh, and that's what you're gonna have to play with depending on how long your arms are, okay, how tall or short you are, but this is a nice, comfortable position for Coach Matt. Now what Matt is gonna do is he is going to put himself into a deadlift position and he's gonna have his arms uh, basically clamping the stone just like so. Now if you can tell, he's in this deadlift position, okay, so it's not a squat, so he's gonna be pretty much uh, in a rounded over deadlift position and he's trying to create force as if he was crushing this stone, like imagine there was a big balloon between your arms and you're trying to pop that balloon. That's the kind of force that he's building. Uh, and typically with his hand positioning, he's trying to wedge his hands as deep as possible underneath of there. Uh, Matt, are you using Spock hands or no? Uh, no Spock hands, I just go as wide as possible. Okay, so he's going wide fingers. So if you were to look at my fingers, coach tie camera up. So I have my fingers like this. This is what Matt's doing. Some people use Spock hands. I don't know Klingon, so I am a big fan of going webs out as far as possible, okay? So Matt's got his hands dug underneath that stone. He's creating tons of pressure. And now all he's gonna do is basically stand up with that stone nice and smooth, okay? And as he does that, he's gonna go into the lap position. So right now he's got this stone in his lap and he's crushing that stone into his chest uh, as strong as possible. So from here, we wanna look at hand positioning. So in this position where he's hugging it, 
His hands are gonna be around the stone and typically the bigger the stone, the easier this is to do, where we basically wanna have our hands almost at like uh, a 10 and two position. The stone's a little bit small for Coach Matt, so he is kind of hugging it. But as it gets bigger, you're gonna have your hands a little bit more over top in that 10 and two position. So that way we can have good leverage, all right? So from here, what he's gonna do is he's gonna hug it into his chest and then he's going to bring his butt back to use his hips and then pull the stone all the way up to the ceiling and right over top of the bar, just like so. So that was a perfect stone load. So let's see that again from the beginning. So what he's gonna do, we can move through a little bit faster now. He's gonna square up the stone exactly where it needs to be. He's gonna have his arms just to show the distance. Okay, his feet are set in that good stance position. He's gonna put his arms clamped just like he's clawing or like has that kind of crab claw squeeze. And then he's gonna stand straight up with it, nice and smooth. He's gonna lap it in, hug it tight to his chest, use his hips to load up that posterior chain, up and over, clean right over top. That was beautiful. So we're just gonna do it one more time. Coach Matt for the camera on your go. I'm not gonna coach you through it. So he's got one more on his own. Nice, good pickup, big hug, crush it right over top. Boom, beautiful. Looks absolutely awesome. So that's the basics of how you load an Atlas stone. Uh, obviously the smaller the stone, you're gonna have to gradually work up and your technique will get better as the stone gets bigger. I know it sounds weird, but the bigger the stone, the better leverage you have. And we'll talk about that more in the mistakes of what we kind of see people do, uh, which is gonna be our whole next segment. So. Let's get on over to the mistakes of what people commonly do wrong with this Atlas stone, and then we'll talk about the gear that is used. All right, let's hit them with some mistakes. We see these all the time, and we're gonna correct them. There's a lot more mistakes that can happen with the Atlas stone than the previous video with the circus dumbbell, so let's cover them all. So right off the bat, the first one has to do with the position of the stone to the yoke, okay? If you don't get this right, this is going to really mess you up in your training, and even more so in competition. So the first one is gonna be that the stone is just too close to the yoke. So Matt has the stone, we see this often, so he's gonna go to load the stone over the bar. Either one, his, his head is gonna smash into this bar, which is just very uncomfortable. Or two, when he goes to pick it up, he's gonna smash right into the yoke. So let's see what that looks like, Coach Matt. So he's too close, goes to pick it up and load it, and goes straight up into the bar. Okay, so then you're wasting time, wasting energy, and you have to restart all the way. Now, Coach Matt, let's show where it's too far back, and you basically have to do the Frankenstein walk to the yoke. So now we're too far back, he goes to load it, and then as he goes to load it over, uh-oh, now he's gotta walk like Frankenstein, which, once again, wastes precious time and precious energy. So you have to get that taken care of before anything else. All right, from there, another thing that we commonly see with the position and stance is athletes go too wide with their stance to pick up the stone, and typically it's gonna knock their knees in, okay? So once again, just not efficient, okay? It can be done, but it's just very inefficient. Now we have this huge gap, okay? It's almost like he's just gonna drop, uh, drop his balls. <laughs> Sounds, it's just what happened. It's just what happened, okay, guys? Uh, so we wanna make sure that we have that stance right outside the stone. From there, another one is getting in a squat position to pick the stone up. Just very bad leverage and very inefficient. So see this, if you come from the side, you can see that he's in a squat position, okay? So we don't wanna look like this when we pick up a stone, okay? If we're picking something up, typically we wanna pick it up with our back and be in a deadlift position. So Coach Matt, show him a deadlift position real quick on that stone. Boom, so see his hips are a little bit higher. All right, from there, the next one that we have to work on is the throwing up of the stone, okay? I'm a stickler when it comes to this. It's easy to do this when the stone is light, but I'm telling you, once the stone gets heavier, you are not going to be able to literally physically throw up a stone in the air. It does not happen, okay? If you're doing that, the stone is too light for you. So when we're picking up the Atlas stone, we wanna make sure that we have a smooth pull, we stand all the way up, and then we lap it, depending on how wide your feet are, sometimes you need to take a step in, which we can show you with Coach Matt, or you'll just be able to lap it, but we do not want to throw the stone up into our lap, okay? So Coach Matt, kind of throw when you're kind of tossing the stone up. See that? We don't want that, especially if the stone gets a little bit of uh, 
just momentum and it kind of slips off, it slides off, that's a no bueno, okay? So Coach Matt, you can bring it down. All right, so show them a smooth pickup, no toss right up into the lap. Perfect, just like so. So that was very smooth, okay? Awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the mistakes from the lap to the load, okay? So Coach Matt has been doing like 800 reps of this. He's the champion. All right, he's gonna put it into his lap. So once it's in his lap, okay, typically what we wanna make sure uh, that we're doing is we're not having our arms underneath of the stone. So you'll see this common where people go to, to load the stone with their arms underneath of it, okay? So that is not the position we want with our hands, okay? Poor leverage. So Matt, show them where we kind of want our hands. So we want them to be higher and more over top. And like I said, this is a little bit of a smaller stone for the sake of the video. If Matt's loading a 250, 300 pound stone, his hands are gonna be just like that. So it kind of at that 10 and two mark, if there was a clock where your arms could be, that's where it's gonna be, all right? The next thing we wanna make sure that we do is have it high up on our chest, okay? So uh, Brian also used to use a great example of thinking about a Superman emblem on your chest. That's where you wanna put the stone. And the reason being is because as we naturally go to load this, it's probably gonna slide down a little bit. So the higher we can get the stone, the better leverage we're gonna be when we use our hips to actually load the stone over. So uh, Matt, just show them lower on your, your uh, or, so that's high, so this is the position that we want. Now show them where most people probably would put it. Nice and low, okay? Just like so. So you want to have that stone up as high as possible and crushing it into your chest using all of your back muscles, your forearms, everything you got to hold that stone in position when we go to load. The last two mistakes, and these are very crucial, is when we don't use our hips to load the stone over the bar, okay? So Matt's gonna show you, he's gonna put it into his lap. And as we did prior, we showed how we load the hips. Now this is gonna be a stone load without hips, where basically you just try to muscle the stone straight up, okay, and then over. Now the issue with that is you're losing power, okay, you're also losing leverage. Uh, and when that happens is typically we see athletes who can't pull it high enough because they don't have that power from the hips and that triple extension. All right, so the last one that we wanna cover is not pulling high enough with the stone to clear the bar. A lot of times people can do everything right, and then what they miss is that last little uh, cherry on top of the pie, which is pulling up all the way towards the ceiling and really getting full triple extension. So at the top of that stone, we should see him on his toes, him leaning back and getting full clearance just like so. So Matt, do a, do a couple of those real quick so they can just show how high you can pull. That's about a foot over top of the bar. So clearly Matt's getting enough leverage to clear this bar and get it over top and not gonna make contact with the bar, which could uh, be a missed lift, all right? So those are pretty much all of the mistakes that we see, uh, or the most common mistakes that we see with the Atlas Stone. Uh, now we're gonna just cover the gear that we would recommend you use when doing this uh, in a competition, and we'll wrap the video up. All right, so let's cover the gear that we recommend you use for this event. Now, obviously it's personal preference, so you can add some, you can take away from this, but this is kind of the staple all around gear that we would use or we have used in competition. So starting from the feet up, Matt's wearing his Ollie shoes. I really like Ollie shoes for stone just because it gives you better support, okay? And uh, they're not running shoes, so you're not gonna slip into your toes. They have a nice firm heel. So just overall, you're just gonna have, be more supported when you go to do a stone mode. So highly recommend that. Next would be knees. So uh, you may or may not want to wear knee sleeves. We both wear knee sleeves when we do Atlas stones. Uh, one, it just helps because you're loading the stone on top of your quad. So one, it's just a little bit more comfortable. Uh, and then two, it just kind of keeps those knees a little bit more lubricated and warm for that movement. From there, this is a personal preference. Some people like to wear belts. Some people don't like to wear belts. I don't ever wear a belt. This is like one of the most uh, no belt movements I ever do is gonna be with Atlas stones. So Matt has a soft belt, so you could probably wear a soft belt and get away with it. We just don't wanna have a big belt in the way of that stone. Um, we wanna keep it as tight to our body as possible. The other thing is you kinda of create inner abdominal pressure while pushing against the stone when you breathe and brace, if that makes sense. Uh, so like we said, probably soft belt would be the farthest we would go. We don't wear hard belts when we do stones, uh, but that's just something to keep in mind. From there, uh, we have elbows, okay? So we got elbow sleeves, if you want your elbow sleeves, totally personal preference. Uh, and then we have tape right here. So typically we would tape our forearms up. As you can see, Matt's arms 
uh, have a little bit of residue from tacky or they just kind of get scraped up. Uh, and I think every first straw man gets their scrapes of uh, just stones in the beginning and then they realize it's not the coolest thing in the world. So they put tape on top and they roll it around and use tape, duct tape. Sometimes they have those gauntlets or sleeves that you can wear uh, for Atlas stones, totally up to you. And then we have this amazing stuff, tacky. There's all different uh, brands of tacky, but this is just spider tacky. Basically this puts handles on around objects and uh, it just is just the most sticky stuff you could ever imagine stuck to your arms and it creates that stone stuck to your arms and you can just load it and throw it in there, do whatever you want with it, but it ain't going anywhere because you got tacky on. So tacky is like basically one of the best things you can have for Atlas stones if you're able to use it. Sometimes uh, competitions don't allow you to use it, but if you are allowed, grab some of this. It's going to help, I don't know, probably like 50 pounds to your stone. It's one of the craziest advantages you can get in lifting. Exactly. That's why straw man's phenomenal. Um, but other than that, I think that's pretty much all the gear that we'd recommend uh, for Atlas stones. The one thing I will say is um, maybe multiple shirts or no shirts. The sweat, more sweat you have, the more susceptible it is to slipping or sliding. Some people wear grip shirts, some people wear no shirts. So that's just something to consider. Um, but yet again, another personal uh, preference. But that's pretty much it when it comes to Atlas stones and loading a stone over a bar. Uh, hopefully this video helped. We gave you guys tons of tips and things to consider. Maybe fine tune your stone performance to turn you into the ultimate stoner. <laughs> uh, but if you liked the video, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends, share it all over Facebook, give it to your grandma, the cat down the street, whoever you know, give it to them because they need to know how to be a stoner just like us. So subscribe, stay in Lean Mean Track Machine. Make sure you go follow Coach Matt on his YouTube channel. He's putting out excellent content. He's also the fitness editor for zatstrength.net and writes all the articles that we pump out, programs for us, just great guy. So check out his stuff and content and we'll see you next time. Peace. We'll